Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to tell you how a vintage Marantz receiver works. So we got to start with the most obvious question here. What is a receiver? A receiver is three things in one. It is a power amp, a preamp, and a tuner. Likewise, if you just take these two things, it is an integrated amp. So now that we know what a receiver is, let's talk about how it works. So we're going to start with our signals. We have the tuner, we have aux, and we have phono. So let's start with the phono because this one is unique to all of the other inputs on the receiver. We're leaving out tape and we're leaving out AMF and we're just calling it tuner. So the phono signal, this is coming right off of your record player, where this is going is a phono preamp. And this exists on the receiver on one circuit board. And what this is doing is it's taking the very, very small signal from the uh, cartridge on your record player and it's making it bigger. It's making it very similar to what you'd find coming out of here. And then what we have is a switch called the selector switch. And what's going on here is we have everything coming from the inputs is going into the switch and you get to choose what you want to come through your selector switch and what you choose goes to the pre amplifier now what the pre amplifier is doing is it's doing it's doing things like controlling the uh, bass the uh, mids and the treble if you're equipped with those things. Maybe you have the loudness button. The preamp is doing all these things. It is making, it's kind of conditioning the signal so that it's ready for the power amplifier to make it happen. So once the signal is conditioned and it's gone through the preamp, it goes to another thing. It's a potentiometer and it is the volume potentiometer. And what that's doing is it's getting the signal ready for the power amplifier. And what the power amp does is it makes the signal really loud. I can't think of the name right now, but think of the power amp as one of those big giant tools that the uh, tree guys use to grind up the trees when they take them down and make wood chips out of them. The power amp is kind of like that. It's taking whatever you feed it and it's making it a certain amount louder. And this is where you get into more expensive receivers. You can have a receiver with a small power amp, or you can have a receiver with a big power amp. And the big power amp costs more money and requires more power. So the receiver is going to be bigger, heavier, and more powerful. So anyways, once it's through the power amp, a good receiver will have a protection circuit. And what this protection circuit is doing is it is looking for nasty stuff coming out of here. Audio is AC. Like this. Vibrations happen like this. Vibrations do not happen with DC, which would be a flat line, and that's what we're trying to make sure doesn't come out of the power amp. DC will ruin your speakers. It'll basically turn them into a heater, it'll fry the coil, and your speaker won't work anymore. A good receiver has a protection circuit on it, and it's protecting your speakers from bad DC current coming out of the power amp in case of a failure. And then, what finally happens is everything goes to your speakers right here. And this can be whatever you want. It can be a Klipschla Scala, it can be a Realistic Minimus 7 or whatever the heck it is. It can be whatever you want, obviously. So basically this is how a receiver works. You've got your signals. They could be anything. We're calling them tuner, aux, or phono. You could have tape, you could have CD, you could have whatever you want. That's kind of what aux covers here. You switch it to what you want. It goes through the preamp where it conditions the sound. And then that goes through a volume potentiometer to the power amp. And the power amp makes it loud. The protection circuit does its job and then it sends it all to the speakers. It's worth noting that not all receivers have a phono preamp. Any vintage receivers can have a phono preamp, 
but a new one might not. So if you're buying new, make sure you've got a photo preamp if you want that, otherwise you'll have to buy one separate. Also, not all receivers have protection circuits. Just about every Marantz receiver has a protection circuit in some way. The 2215B you just saw technically does not have a protection circuit, but what it does have is coupling capacitors. And the coupling capacitors take up any DC current from the power amplifier and protect your speakers that way. Whereas a uh, DC coupled power amplifier is going to have a protection circuit. Some lower end pioneers do not have protection circuits. They have fuses. They don't work. They'll still ruin your speakers. Ask me how I know. So the reason this is so useful is it allows you to understand what might be going wrong with your receiver. If you hear crackling and stuff and changing the volume doesn't do anything to adjust the volume of the crackling, it stays the same, you very likely have an issue right here. So what are you going to do? You're going to follow your signal. You're going to send a signal through aux, likely, and you'll follow it into the selector switch. Is it there? Yes. You follow it into the preamp. Is it there? Yes. And if you follow to the volume knob, you'll probably see it there too. You'll probably see it get bigger and smaller if you're following the signal with your multimeter. And then once you get to the power amp, you might find spikes in voltage or something. And that's going to mean that something's wrong with your power amp. Time to dive in and start replacing transistors. However, what if the issue you're hearing changes with the volume control? Well, that means it's behind the volume control. It's probably in the preamp. What if the issue you're having goes away when you jiggle your selector switch and you, you know, ex exercise it a little bit? Well, maybe your selector switch is dirty and it needs to be cleaned. So get out the deoxid D5, clean off your selector switch. What if the only issue you're having is with your phono preamp? Well, it's probably your phono preamp. If everything else works just fine, it's all making it to the speakers and sounding good. These two are working, but this one's not. The issue's probably right here. So this is really how you fix these, is you just understand what's going on here. You follow this path with your multimeter, get a signal, put it through one of them, follow it through the receiver, use your schematic to find out where you find the signal, and that's how you find the problem and eventually fix the receiver. So I hope that was at least sort of enlightening to some of you. Uh, if you appreciated this video or think I'm full of it, let me know in the comments. And uh, I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.